That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Saw 10, which is the sixth film directed by Kevin Grutert, uh, which is being released courtesy of Lionsgate on September 29th, 2023. I'm assuming Kevin has directed other Saw films? Well, he moved from being an editor on oh. the Saw films to making his directorial debut with Saw 6. He also did Saw 3D, uh, and some other films include Jezebel, starring Snare. Sarah. Sarah Snook, who if you like her from Succession, uh, you might uh, find that worth checking out. Also, uh, Visions and Jackals. Saw 10. A sick and desperate John travels to Mexico for a risky and experimental medical procedure in hopes of a miracle cure for his cancer, only to discover the entire operation is a scam to defraud the most vulnerable. When it's... <laughs> I find it funny that the IMDb description doesn't say his last name because it sounds like somebody looking for a hooker. Or that podcast, uh, Dear, what is it? Dear, Dirty John. Dirty John. Mm -hmm. What's your pull quote? Oh, although it's by far the best looking and most polished entry in this one note torture porn franchise, Saw 10 feels like the third layer of breading in a sandwich that's only trying to give us the meat sweats. Oh, mine is... Yes, it's overly long, melodramatic torture porn. However, if you're a fan of the previous installments, you'll probably like this one. Uh, I, I agree. I, I think it's the best looking, best produced Saw film. I also think the story's the most interesting. Yes, it, it, you know, because Grutert Saw 6 and Saw 3D, I think, are really bad. But part of that is because it looks like they were made on a shoestring budget. So I think this is what... He's showing what he can do, given some money. Uh, and it's from the writers of Spiral, which is part of the Saw universe, of course. Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger. I think it's just unfortunate that the setup, like the hour before we get into, you know, do you want to play a game, it would make for a really good genre film. I... This film reminds me of, like, uh, good-looking people who don't want to, like, who, when I was younger, we used to say, like, they don't want to fight the fug. So, like, they don't look good because they don't try, but they're, like, actually good-looking people. That's how this movie feels to me. Like, there are some really fun moments, and it seems self-aware, and the story's interesting. But it can't help itself to just be bad. And it's too damn long. <laughs> it is at, like, an hour, 58 minutes. It feels too long, but, uh, yeah. Uh, however... There is one captivating character, which I, I don't like any of the Saw movies. I don't even like James Wan's first movie. And we just rewatched all of these things. I, Spiral, I can barely, like, like I can get through because I like some cast members. But I really like no one in any of these films. There is a woman played by, uh, named Cecilia Peterson, uh, played by Cinema McAdee Lund, who is utterly captivating. And I've seen her in other things. And if you liked her in this, check out Headhunters. She's the best part of this movie. Mm -hmm. um, but the story is basically what I just said. Uh, so John, Jigsaw, this is set between Saw 1 and 2. Much like uh, how Rogue One is in the Star Wars universe. Oh, I don't know anything about that. But... John finds out he has terminal cancer and he's told he only has a few months to live. He goes to a cancer support group. One of the members of the support group, played by Michael Beach, uh, bumps into him and looks fantastic. And of course, John is like, what happened? Oh, my stage four pancreatic cancer is in remission because I had some experimental treatment in like Norway or Norway. something. Mm -hmm. So Michael Beach gives Jigsaw the information. Jigsaw contacts them immediately gets a call we can talk about all this um and they're like yeah girl uh it's hot in norway like the big pharma wants to shut us down but we have a situation set up in mexico city why don't you come out here john goes out there the procedures performed so we think so while john is recovering after a few days he decides he wants to return to the secret location to give one of the ladies a, like a thank you gift because he's rediscovered his goodwill towards men yes and yeah actually so when he gets there he realizes the operation is shut down so at first as the audience you would think i mean if you hadn't read the premise you would think that maybe like someone took them out because they're posing a threat to big pharma but as john is like looking through stuff he sees that when he was having the surgery he was watching the monitor and then we see that there's like a DVD of a surgery that is what he was looking at. And that's when he realizes that 
It was fake. And then he takes off his bandages, which should reveal like a buzzed head with his skull cut open. And he realizes they never operated on him. So he decides to contact some friends who are people we recognize from the other films, namely Amanda and Const what's Cost his name? Costas Mandalore. Mm -hmm. They help him capture the people involved, which total five. And he sets up a game, which is not until the hour point mm -hmm. that we get this game. Of course, they all get killed. And in the end, we're left with uh, John and Amanda to proceed with. With the franchise as we know it. Yeah, because we know in Saw 2, that that's when they kidnapped the doctor to actually perform the surgery. Yes. So I thought the story was actually quite clever, and it fits in well with... <laughs> you know one two three it fits in well because it's doing there are certain moments where like god well this is really stupid and only to realize that jigsaw john already is one step ahead or two steps ahead yeah um but i thought to start people probably want to know the games that he set up so the first game is john is in the hospital and he sees a custodian about to steal a dying patient's um, belongings so then we see that he has taken this person who he's referring to as Sticky Fingers and the trap he has set up is what I think the movie poster is where if this person doesn't break all the fingers on their right hand, their eyeballs will be sucked out and they do get sucked out. But then we realized it was just in John's imagination, like he was thinking of a punishment for this guy, but then the custodian sees him. <laughs> there are a lot of funny moments because then John tells the guy like, oh, you made a good choice. Because if not, I was going to kill you. But he only made that choice because someone he saw someone watching him. Sure. The next one... That kid was not very slick. He was fingering that Rolex and that wedding band for a long time way out in the open. He was. <laughs> you dumb dumb. The next one is the driver, the trusted driver who also plays the neurosurgeon. <laughs> so like the, the taxi cab driver. Uh, John captures him and basically puts bombs on his forearms and tells him like you have to cut them out with a scalpel and the kid does so we presume he lives and that's interesting because it the taxi he, because he's able to track him down because of his day job very easily that's right because he says every day tourists ask me to take them to this one like statue so john waits by the statue which is interesting because david fincher's the killer with michael fassbender has a similar situation where he has to track somebody down and he's only able to do it because he can uh, do it through a taxi cab driver oh then we have the lab technician who was like drawing John's blood, but it was really just fake because none of these people are doing any medical services. I think the only person who's moderately qualified is the, the person who was playing the anesthesiologist is either a veterinarian or a, or a vet tech. I'm assuming he's not a veterinarian because he didn't know what cerebral tissue was. That's why I think Cecilia Peterson is actually... A uh, medical professional? I think so, because she's able to name all the instruments that have to be used and uh, guides her fellow colleagues through the process that they have to endure. But anyway, getting back to the games, the lab tech gets... Um, if she doesn't extract bone marrow from her femur... She will be decapitated. So we see her chop off her leg. She has to literally chop. You would pass out from shock. But of course she doesn't make it in time. So she does get decapitated. Then there's Gabriella, this drug addict who was pretending to be like, like the hostess of the house John was staying in preparing for surgery. And she gets, this was a really strange kill because she gets dragged like by her one arm and one leg with chains up like you think it's gonna pull her apart but it's not like braveheart they're actually telling her you need to break your bones to get out of the chains or like radi you're gonna get hit with radiation so while she's trying to break her bones radiation's hitting her so her, her yeah. skin's melting but cecilia tells her oh break your arm no. i mean break your leg so you'll swing out of the way of the heat but that didn't make sense to me i think she should have broke her arm so she'd fall to the ground yeah Either way, Cis Gabriella, the girl, is able to get out of the trap, so she lives. But then Cecilia kills her. <laughs> well, because we're forgetting a, an important character. We'll get to that oh. person. But then, um, then that well, we'll get to him now. So then another, the the fifth person who doesn't come until later was a guy named Parker, who was a fake patient. When really he's the boyfriend of Cecilia, the person, the, the ringleader. He shows up 
and they're able to get the upper hand on John and Amanda because Amanda's there helping him. Constance Mandalore? Costas. Costas Mandalore? He's not a part of the game. He only shows up to... He's in the after credits. In the after credits. But anyway, they get the upper hand on John and Amanda, so they think, and they tie them. John gets tied with this little boy who he had befriended at the surgery center. They get tied to like a, a seesaw. seesaw that's... It's waterboarding, but instead of water, it's blood. Uh -huh. I actually thought that was pretty good. That's probably the best game of them all. Because we see that John is telling... They're calling back to earlier in the film when because little boy only speaks Spanish and John is trying to ask him how do you say the word pull? So the little boy tells him in Spanish. So then this seesaw requires like the game is that each person has to pull a lever, which will cause the other person to drown. And he tells the little boy, Don't pull. How fortuitous that that was the one word. I know, it's corny, but it was sweet because clearly John had an effect. It's so strange that this like maniacal killer seems to be humane. It doesn't work for me at all. It doesn't work for me at which all Which is either. part of why I don't like these movies. The blood boarding doesn't really work either because... Where do you get all that damn blood from? Where <laughs> is that endless supply of blood from? And uh, based on how it is, like you could just... You couldn't shut your mouth? You then, of course, we when we think Cecilia and Parker have the upper hand, they don't because John planned for this. So the final game for them is that Cecilia and John and Parker get trapped in a room where John told them all their money is because he took all the cash they stole from all these people who thought they were getting legitimate cancer treatments. And it's like he traps them in a room with poisonous gas and they have to fight over one air hole and they... Cecilia ends up killing Parker, and then we can assume she's left to die. And then the post credit scene, because we both were like, what about Michael Beach? Because he set Jigsaw up. Well, that's the post credit that they have him trapped in what looks like the same bathroom from Saw 1, and they have some device that looks like it's going to claw his abdomen out. Because, so those are the games. Which would be fitting because he had shown him a fake scar. Of a fake scar. pancreas being removed, apparently. Uh, what doesn't make sense about the uh, downfall of Cecilia is that she's painted as kind of, well, equally brilliant. brilliant and equally sadistic, but on the opposite end of, like, without the kind of moral high ground that... Uh, John Kramer seems to be on, but I don't believe how she goes down. I just don't believe that she would be led. You would think she'd know better that because John set her up and said, "Well, your money is up there, but you have to go get it." And then this dummy goes up there to get it, and it's a trap. Uh, yeah, she. So like, I agree, it's it's silly. But she to me is like the Lydia Tar of licensed medical professionals moonlighting as con artists. Well, let's just get to that because I think, I think the better story would have, uh, like the better story should have been that John meets his match. And his match is this Cecilia lady who, like you said, is equally sadistic. But instead of her trying to teach people a lesson like John thinks he's doing, she's really enjoying killing folks and getting money. So maybe they get like somehow they end up in like a seclude, like on an island where these experiments are happening and they both have to battle each other. Like they use their wits and set traps. And I think that would have been more fun. Because you already mentioned the first hour, I did think was a very interesting story, but it's not a Saw movie, right? You need to have traps. When that's probably why I thought it was the most interesting is that it doesn't feel like a Saw movie for the first hour. But also, uh, I think what's interesting is that maybe she's not even that sadistic. It's this, it's this that in this film, John, she's uh, sticking her finger into John's Achilles heel, which is the bloodshed of the innocent. Yeah, that could, because then it, it's almost like how a Marvel, like in the Marvel movies, how the villain is able to get the upper hand on the hero every single movie because they for play, a minute. for a minute, because they play against like, oh, their uh, affection for humanity. I feel like that was, that, that is John's Achilles heel is that he is. Well, because he's bothered that Gabriella isn't given medical attention because she won her game. <laughs> It's like, y'all sound so dumb. Okay, I need to get through all these notes. Um, someone at the cancer support group early on in the film uh, says, today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. And <laughs> I thought that was funny. I feel like would make anybody suffering from cancer want to murder them. And then when the doctor tells um, John that he uh, is going to die, so instead of trying to fight it, he should just, like, go with it john gets mad and is like are you advising me to die easy mm -hmm. which i think is funny considering what his hobby is which is torturing people right he, he, the doctor's asking him to actually go gently into that good night okay one plot point that so we're told that there's this dr finn 
who looks like hell. <laughs> He's this doctor on TV who does experimental cancer treatments. So when Michael Beach gives Jigsaw the information, of course he looks it up and sees that Dr. Finn is this per legitimate person. But then he sees a video of Dr. Finn's daughter who is Cecilia. And she's like, well, my dad's in hiding because Big Pharma doesn't want him to cure all these chronic illnesses because then they'll lose trillions of dollars. So he's in hiding. But I'm taking over his work and I'm taking my show on the road. I thought that was so stupid. Like if they're after your dad, what makes you think they won't come for your dumbass who's on the internet talking about all, uh, she's literally on tour doing all these experiments. But it's preying on the desperate. And, and, I, and I believe that there are people that would see that and cling to the possibility of hope. So I think that's what's kind of funny about it. Well, sure. But I, I, I feel like just like how we think Cecilia is too smart to fall for John's trick. I feel like John is, should be too smart to think that this makes any sense. But I guess we all have our blind spots. Because he does ask like, well, what is this going to be? And she does seem very convincing because she knows what she's talking about. Again, yeah. Th that's why I think she is actually a... Well, and they keep saying that her dad is an actual person that does cancer research. And then the film is set between Saw 1 and 2. So, it, you know, it's like, what, 15 years ago? So he's on like this geosite whatever and he <laughs> sends a message like his name and medical information and then immediately the next scene is the actual doctor in the video calling him which should be a red which, flag yeah john and, yeah and she's like oh well you know what we actually have an opening like if you can get here next week well and, first she says in three months and then we find out that that's what she tells everyone dangling the carrot dangling yeah the and she's like oh wait i bet you don't have three months <laughs> So, oh my God. So when John flies to Mexico City, he has his trusted driver slash neurosurgeon pick him up. And then when he gets the location, he gets kidnapped, like violently kidnapped. It's like a Michelle Franco film. Yeah. It's so stupid. But when he gets to the compound, it's always, do you remember the movie White Fire? Yes. When the, the female lead has plastic surgery to look different and she goes to some clinic that's like this. Yes. That does not look well equipped. No. Um, but... So then Cecilia's talking to John, like, what do you do for work? Oh, you're retired. Okay, well. And then John basically tells her he's a life coach. I thought that was funny. That him torturing people is him helping people live better lives. <laughs> she lets on that she realizes that he's jigsawed. I don't know if she did at that point. She must have. Oh, that's an interesting point. Because, yes, at the end she says, I know you're jigsaw. Because she said I was worried at first. But I'm so gonna... that's a plot point that I think is weird. Like, so you have this like sadistic murderer and you're not worried about like conning him. You should have killed him. After she, you yeah, you should have really just killed him. If you knew he was Jigsaw. The Gabriella girl, when John, well, what's her name? Renata Vaca. When John and Cecilia are having this talk and it's the night, it's like the day before his surgery. Gabriella brings him a bottle of tequila and says, oh, to celebrate. But then immediately... Cecilia's like, you can't drink that before your surgery. I don't understand why she did that. That seems so... For a, for a movie that feels too long, there are a lot of moments that are like, I don't know why we needed that. I think they were trying to stress there was a human connection of empathy between these two people because Gabrielle is also seen as something of an innocent because she's wrapped up because she's got a drug addiction problem because uh, Mateo is feeding her drugs from the veterinary clinic. Uh, Speaking of that, why did... Ga There's a moment when, Ga when Gabriella gets said drugs, she goes to like a club... And she has to be in private to take her pills? Yeah, that's... That seemed real stupid. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. During the same tequila moment... Um, or no, it's after John's surgery. It's a success. Of and course. so John's like, well, what do I do now? And Cecilia so goes, live a long, happy life. And I cackled because... <laughs> Uh, what's his name, the actor? Tobin Bell. He looks decrepit. Yeah. I mean, he... Well, I shouldn't say that. He looks old as hell in this movie, so it's like a long, happy life. But I do think he looks better than the previous movies. Sure. I think he still kind of looks like um, what's happening to the woman in the taking of Deborah Logan. As I was looking... Yeah, he does look like that. Although, there is a moment after he's been cured of his cancer, and he's sitting at this really cute cafe in Mexico City, and he's like peacefully sketching torture devices, but then he crumbles it up. Um, to what you already alluded to, I, I got the sense that maybe he felt like he didn't need to do the torturing anymore. Yeah, like he was grateful, he was ready to turn a new leaf. But as I was watching him sketch and like him sitting at this cafe in this beautiful city, I kept thinking like, 
Meryl Streep could have played Jigsaw. Oh I think she would have made a good Jigsaw. <laughs> she could be Jigsaw for Halloween. We need to talk about Amanda. First of all, Amanda's going on my worst hair list. Or Shawnee Smith. I yeah. thought she looked like if you took Kira from the Dark Crystal mm -hmm. and mixed her with Courtney Cox. Ooh, those bangs. Oh, she looks terrible. The, the Scream 3 bangs, yeah. Because... I'm assuming because it's set between Saw 1 and 2, then Amanda's like in her 20s. Mm -hmm. But the lady playing her in this movie does not look like she's in her 20s. Mm -hmm. But then she has that young person's haircut mm -hmm. and her style. I felt bad because Tobin Bell actually, I think, looks better in this movie than in the previous ones. And then Constance? Costas. Costas Mandalore also looks the same to me. But yeah, Amanda, I... I don't know. That was a little rough. It was rough, but she did get cheers from the audience when she came on. Well, there was one lady in the audience clapping at everything. Yeah. Well, when we find thing. out that Amanda's helping John, so we see the four people get kidnapped, and then we immediately see that they're all there to play the game, and we see Amanda's there to help. And then we immediately get a flashback of Amanda kidnapping them all. Mm -hmm. We didn't need that. No. Like, we know how they all got there. Again, this movie's too long to be doing things like that. Uh, yeah, the fact that it takes an hour to get to the game feels... Because if you're used to the Saw movies, they start off with a bang. Like, they just start and just keep going. So, while I did think the first hour was interesting, it... Yeah, it dragged on. There's a moment when the lab tech, after she's been killed, they need rope. Because they're trying to, like, grab, like, a phone. To me, that's really the most grisly scene, I think. And it's kind of funny because the thing yeah. is, like... She grabs the decapitated body. A Valentina. Cuts open the abdomen, yanks out the small intestine, and uses the uses uses it as a rope. I thought that was pretty gruesome for them for her to get the uh, thing that her phone is dangling from. Yeah, that's pretty good. Cecilia is so fake. She's talking to everyone like we can't see right through you, and then she's trying to convince everyone to play the game so they can get out, and everyone's like. I can't. There's no way on earth I can do what he's asking me to do. And then she goes, you got to do it. And every single one of them goes, okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny. They only have three minutes to do these. And t the two of them are down to the second. And they, they die basically because oh. of seconds. If you had started sawing into yourself immediately, you would have had enough time. I'm glad you said that because I missed one of the games. Mm -hmm. The very handsome uh, uh, neurosurgeon. No, the anesthesiologist. The one who's the veterinary tech. Mm -hmm. His game is that, like you just said, in three minutes, he has to cut open his skull and, and cut out a piece of his uh, brain to then put it in some device to get a key. And he, the, the section of skull he cuts out is like a perfect circle under duress. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just seemed crazy. It seemed crazy. And like at the point where he did, it takes him 60 seconds to decide to do it. So he's doing two minute brain surgery. Basically. What also Valentina takes at least 30 seconds of convincing to saw through her. She saw through her whole big ass leg. It, it, it It's so I it don't have away. any other notes. And then that's the second out marrow, bone marrow. <laughs> The reason these movies don't work for me is like it's just too much. Like this sickly man with the help of this crazy looking lady set up all these very elaborate. And then they're in Mexico City. Where did they get all the stuff from? She, she flew in the jigsaw doll because he didn't bring oh, that I, there with yeah, him. Yeah, we didn't mention that. The jigsaw doll on the tricycle shows up. Like how did. She... That's like two suitcases worth, man. You're going to pay for that? It's, I, I think that's why people like these movies because they're so ridiculous. But and I. Also, I mean, I rewatched one through five, what, three weeks ago? You know, they're not great movies, but I think if you like the premise, then, I, I mean, I guess if you like it, you like it, and you would like this one. I don't know. What would you give this movie? This is the highest rating I've given any Saw film, and that's a two, uh, again, because of uh, Cinema McAdee Lund, who I think, again, captivating. I'm giving it two and a half because I think it is the best Saw movie, but that's like being the smartest Kardashian. So I think that um, I still would probably, I mean, I wouldn't want to watch it again. That's how I felt about all of the Saw films, but yeah. All done? Mm -hmm. Hit the thanks button, listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>